Hi everybody, welcome to Friday Saws. I'm Alison. This is Saw Like Dotty, and let's just have a little catch up. I hope that you're doing okay, you're getting lots of lovely sewing done. I wasn't sure I'd have anything to share with you really this week, but I've made better progress than I thought that I would. I've done some little bits, not tiring my eyes out too much. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've got a couple of things to show you, a couple of patterns that I've got, and some fabric and some bits so hang around if you want to grab a drink grab one now so what have I made this week you might have seen me share yesterday on Instagram that so over it have launched a lovely very easy make summer dress which is called the Natalia dress so if you want to look for different versions of it you would just look for hashtag SOI Natalia dress and you'll see the pattern insiders of which I'm one have shared their their makes so I did I shared with you like a purple daisy crinkle fabric that I was going to make this out of. I couldn't tell you what, what pattern it was going to be. When I do sew over it patterns, usually I'm in a size 16, but for some reason when I did my measurements, I thought, well, I think I'd better do an 18 in this. Anyway, it was the, I just twirled the bodice part of it and it was absolutely huge. Um, and then I had some left, so I was kind of recutting the bodice part and anyway three fabrics, two cataracts later, and I've made it, but in a completely different fabric, and I'm really pleased with it. So you will see from the pictures I'm going to show you now, there's a couple of different versions of it. So the front looks the same. You can just do it different lengths. The back either has the straps that just go straight over, which is the version I did, or an option to put a tie on the back, which pulls them together. I am considering doing that version maybe next time, because all of the ones that I've seen in that version have been really, really nice. My straps... Um, I was wearing it yesterday and my straps are a little bit too long so I just need to adjust them but I think it's because it's in a um, viscose chalice I think it's maybe just given a little bit from when I first did them and um, so I just made it in a straight size 16 it's a lovely fit lovely make really easy to do so these are the line drawings just here so you can see it's got um, it's plain across the front, but across the back has a narrow piece of elastic and then around the waist you've got two lines of elastic. This design's still quite in in the shops. I saw a few of those when I was at the Metro Centre last week. So option one, which I did, is just the plain straps at the back. Option two has these like this little tie that comes across at the back, which looks really cute, I've got to say. Um, so it's in size 6 to 30 and it's for a confident beginner. Um, the steps of the pattern take you through it really easily. So even if you're a beginner beginner, I would think that you can do this. Honestly, it wasn't a difficult make at all. So I'll grab it and show you it now. And then I'll drop some line drawings in on it. So as I say, this is a fabric I've had in my stash for maybe two years now. Vis Navy viscose chalice. I was so excited because when I went to reach the thread down, I've not been able to distinguish the one navy thread that I had from the black the whole time that I've had it. And I reached over and I knew which was the navy. I was like, oh, great, my eyes are working properly. Um, so, sorry if I digress. Um, so yeah, I just did it in this rainbow print. You might have seen this, a lot of people got this with the little leopard print in. I mean, you can't really see that at a distance, but you know that it's there. So straight across at the front. Um, you could do different variations on the straps on this. I think you could play with it. You could put scrunchy straps on. I'm thinking of doing one that's got like a rolled hem on either side and then some elastic through that makes it sit. I think that would be really nice. And um, you've got your elastic at the back. So it just sits nicely at the back there and then your elastic channel that goes all the way around. And as you'll see in the photos, I did the maxi length, so plain. And you could do it shorter and put a ruffle on if you wanted to. I think there's quite a lot of options that you could do with the dress um, to sort of change the style of it up. I even think if you wanted to, um, you could cut some rectangles out and probably attach some um, puffy sleeves to it as as well so there you go that is the Natalia dress and check it out on Instagram it was just launched by so over it yesterday um, so yeah I look forward to seeing lots of your um, Natalia dresses popping up because the weather has got better in the UK so lots of us will be wanting simple summer style dresses or summer clothes so what am I wearing today that my two items on the top are ready to wear this is um, 
a double gauze shirt which I actually got at Matalan in the UK. I don't buy much ready to wear. I think I got the little vest at Primark. There are some things that I just with vest tops I just think oh I can't be bothered to make it. I know that I could but you know let's just get it. I, um, yeah anyway so that's where that is just a simple vest top and I've got it paired with today I don't know if you'll be able to see these pants that I made a little while ago which are the Sawero pants. Um, this shirt, I saw it before I made my um, so over it in Zadie blouses. I bought all the fabric on holiday and when I went into Matalan, it is exactly the same as this blouse. It's exactly the same length, perfect beach cover up. Um, and I am going to make this, I've got some bright pink, like cerise pink. I am going to make another one of these, so I've got it in green. But I just picked this up the other day because at the minute I am limited with how long I can sew before my eyes feel a bit iffy. I know that'll get better. I have to be patient. Um, but yeah, so that's ready to wear, paired with some me made trousers, which is absolutely fine, isn't it? So the second thing that I've made this week is the Friday Pattern Company Swero pants, which are these ones just here. Obviously it's the pants, not the top door. Um, I didn't make these last year. These sort of took over from the Tilly and the Buttons Sapphire trousers, which are the ones I'm wearing today. Two years ago when this pattern came out, I went crazy for it and made quite a lot. And then last year... I think I was just living in dresses all the time. I didn't really make any trousers. Um, just to show you the line drawings, they have got like a sloping pocket here. Now I prefer to do them without the pocket, mainly because my weight fluctuates and if I want to run them in, it's very easy if there's no pocket in, just to kind of take undo the waistband a little bit, run the side seam up, redo the waistband, dead easy, bish bosh done. I'm not a pocket fan either and I know some of you aren't, some of you are and are very passionate about it but that's a debate for another day. So all I do with the pattern piece is pretend this is the like the top of the front and it would have a slope here for the pocket and then the leg starts here. So rather than cut the pattern on the slope, I just stick a piece of paper on so the side piece goes straight up to the waistband. Um, easy peasy. The waist is quite a thick elastic waist. So I better show you them, hadn't I? I have got pictures, I will drop them in. I tried them on, I just got these finished. I made them at Sawtoon yesterday. Um, I basically got them completed. I just had um, the elastic threaded through, so I just needed to check where I wanted it to sit and hem them up. Um, before I went to Sawtoon yesterday, there was a baby lock event at um, the Singer Sewing Shop in Whitley Bay, which is about 15, 20 minutes drive for me. Um, as you know, I'm quite, I love baby lock machines, but I wanted to pop along because I recently got the accessory feet gifted from a cover stitch machine and um, the accessory feet like a smaller box of feet, um, well, I mean, the feet are smaller, that's what I mean by that, for my overlocker, which I have used on my um, overlocker in the past, so I'm familiar with those, but with the cover stitch ones, I think I've said to you before, I was like, what are these? So Katie was there, she was absolutely brilliant, she spent loads, of, I could have spent as much time as I wanted with her, we went through all the feet that were in the box, so I now know how to use all of those feet, so I used a foot called a downturn fella today and I did the um, hems on that, so um, I'll take the sound off it and just put in a couple of seconds you'll see it, so what it does is it automatically turns the hem under uh, so I'm sewing it like this on the top, this is your stitch and this is your reverse cover stitch on the back. It automatically turns it under, I think at five eighths of an inch for the size that I've got. Um, so your cover stitch is um, there. These were overlocked before because I wasn't sure if I was just going to turn them up. I wasn't sure if I would need to chop some off the length. Um, so I tried doing one leg on the flat and then one leg in the round. She showed me both ways yesterday and actually managed in the round much better than I thought I would have preferred that. Um, so I am going to do more on those. I know that some of you were asking about that and I will be doing more, but I need a bit more practice, but I now know how to use. There's a double fold hem. There's a bias binding foot, which I already had another one of those. There's a pin tuck foot, which I thought, no, I won't use that. I love that. I can't wait to put pin tucks in everything. And, or a belt loop 
um, foot as well which you could make like bag straps and things like that with so I just need to play with them but I feel much more confident diving on the machine and having a play and with the waistband I'd already put, closed it up but I thought while I've got the cover stitch out and threaded up in black I just did that stitching along the the waist that you do so you pull it through and you do this on your sewing machine normally but I just thought I'd do that on my cover stitch and um, the thing with cover stitch is it's really easy to unpick if you need it unpicking and um, because the looper thread just you just sort of catch catch it. it it wouldn't happen accidentally if you've ever bought a ready-made garment and the thread the hem just unravels and you can't stop it that's cover stitch so if I did want to run these in at the side it would be really really easy to um, unpick both of those um, and make the alterations and then restitch it but I do love that detail on waistbands now in fact while I had it out I did this one as well and um, so if I haven't already I'll pop the picture in of those they could do with another press now they've just been laid around so this flab fabric fabric even I'll just make up words fabric was from Fleur at Hours but it's now out of stock just keep a look out on Kaylee's side because the um the lilac viscose that I made my Judy dress in I'll pop a quick picture in that was also from there and it's really good value it's about eight pound a meter I think when she gets it in so do keep a watch out because she is moving away um over the next few months more from quilting to dressmaking she already carries a lot of dressmaking but she is moving more to dressmaking from quilting so they're my mix for this week so I feel quite pleased with those there's nothing taxing in either of them I've not done zips or buttonholes or anything I try to avoid those if I can anyway um but I'm really pleased with both of them and um Carl's done a bit of 3d printing of um baby lock waist trim bins for a couple of my um sewn buddies locally um, and granny linda sewing was or sews I always get it wrong was one of those and I don't we don't expect any thank yous it costs like pennies to do them but we're not taking orders um and she brought me this pattern as a thank you yesterday from her stash i think and um, it's a brand i've not seen before it's called cinnamon daisy i do like the a4 book that comes with it and um, so it's got this v front here which i do like different sleeves that you can do it's a little bit more of a scooped back so a little bit different for me and it's got some little balls here not sure if I'm a balls person I've got to be honest but I also really like this because a while ago I was going to recreate one of the um Laura Ashley dresses that I used to wear in the late 80s and the waist was like this so I was thinking actually I'm I'll I don't know when I am going to make the dress but I could once I'm happy with it I could um hack a v, a v into the front of it and put a button placket on and that would look exactly like that dress did so it's a win-win so thank you linda i've had a quick look at the instructions looks fairly easy to do in my size range and everything so happy days but i don't know when and um, my next thing i really would like to do hopefully this week is get to grips with my projector maybe do something simple but that we've got a lot on next week so that could be the week after i don't know I need to have a play so what else have I got? I've made two purchases and no three purchases and something from my stash. So one of my purchases, right, this is this is from Liberty. I feel like I'm <laughs> justifying myself. I'm a little bit obsessed with Liberty. I love Liberty prints. I love all the ditzy prints, all the classic ones. I know it's not for everybody. Um, and my sunglasses, which were very focal prescription ones, were Liberty sunglasses. So they had the print on the inside um, and I have checked out if I can get those lenses taken out and replaced with just like a normal lens um, with like a sunglasses coating on and I can I checked it out I can get it done for about 30 quid um, so I am thinking about getting that done however I have bought myself a few pairs of sunglasses because I've not been able to do that for such a long time and I want to have like a set in Carl's car my car some kicking around in the house I'm really kind of building up to the justification here and I don't know why. Anyway, I was browsing like you do on the Liberty sale and I um, do the Liberty Beauty Drop where you get uh, once a quarter a box of beauty goodies. So it used to be £20 a month and all of that went into your account like a credit to spend on Liberty Beauty if you're in store. But if you're online, you can spend it on anything. I know, I mean, you're not supposed to, I have asked them, but 
I'm not going to stop anybody. So obviously, normally I would look and spend it on fabric. I am kind of saving it up towards their beauty advent calendar this year as well. Um, but I knew they had a sale on, so I started browsing sunglasses. So when these came yesterday, I was like, oh, oh, oh. I'm so excited. So if, if you don't like Liberty, bear with me because I'm going to come to something else. But I got really excited about the case. <laughs> How sad am I? How beautiful is this? And then the sunglasses. Ta-da! Look at those. They're very me. I sent a little video to my daughter in France. They were, she went, they are so you, ma'am. And then, are you ready? Because inside, they have Liberty Print. Obviously, only you can see that, but I don't care. Um, and, hello, sunshine. How nice are they? So I, I use my Liberty Points. They didn't cost me anything. I think they were £110 and they were 50 but they cost me nothing. So I was so happy with them. I ordered them in black today and they were only 35 Um, And they're lined. So, yeah, I won't show you both pairs when they come. I just thought I'd share that little moment with you. Um, I ordered... I want to make, like, a handbag... <laughs> What's that? Like a handbag tote bag if you see what I mean. So not a shopping type tote bag. Um, and I was looking around. I know that I could draft it, but at the minute, I don't know. I think since I've had my eyes done, my brain and my ears aren't quite working in the same way. Um, so I picked up this um, McCall's pattern for £5 um, from Hobbycraft, I think I got it, which has got three different sizes that slightly slope in because I want to do a recreate the look. Now this month, June, is so recreate the look run by Jen Leg on Instagram. Um, now, I might get this made next week. I don't know. But I'll drop in what I want to create. Here's a picture. So it's a Kurt Geiger handbag tote bag, which retails for about £135, which I have got some really nice, like, designer leather bags up to a certain price I would go and not over. Um, I did go into the store in the Metro Centre to see if I could actually see it, but they don't have them. They've got a different fabric, but not this one. And it's the print of it. It just reminds me of, da -da -da -da, surprise, surprise, Liberty Print. So I thought, well, I could, I can make one of those. So I've been ordering the bits and bobs, the webbing, the bozel, all the little different bits and bobs. And that one is straight up at the sides. This one's slightly sloped. This one's got longer handles, but I'm going to shorten the handles and then I'll put a strap across the top. And I don't think this zips up, but I, I've done a bag recently where you can kind of put that panel in. So I'm okay with doing, doing that. So I'm going to have a go with this pattern. Now, I have got this fabric from my stash, which I got in the Christmas sale, not this year, the year before, for about £7 a metre from Liberty. So it's their, like, Wiltshire Berry, whatever it's called in crafting, in pale blue. So I fancy doing it in pale blue as a bit of a toile. I think I've got two metres of this. Um, and I'll probably just self-line it in this as well. Um, and I don't know which size yet. I need to kind of see the measurements. So I'm, I'm looking at it thinking the smaller one. Sorry, I was looking over there. It's not really very interesting for you, is it, when I'm looking over there? So I'm thinking the smaller one, but it depends how small that comes up. So it might be small and medium, I would, I would say. I'm thinking of doing that. I'm not even going to attempt to read that small print. And I've got to say, it's so long since I made one of the big four patterns, but it's a bag. I'm not even... How easy, how difficult can it be? I might regret those words. So I'm going to sort of try it in this, see how I find it. But I did order, I did scour Liberty, which was why I was on Liberty in, in the first place. And then ended up buying sunglasses. Um, but I didn't find anything in the quilt and cotton range. And I didn't want to use cotton tan alone. I think that's a little bit too soft. I wanted something with a bit more body and durability as a bag. Um, so I found... Oh, I can't remember the name of the store, but I'll pop a link into this. I just scoured the web and I found this fabric. So it is a Liberty fabric. It says that on the salvage somewhere. There we go. Um, but it's it does fit. Both of these would fit with So Fruity, but I doubt if I'll get them both made this week because this has got sort of little flowers and berries on. It's very me. And I'm thinking this will really kind of recreate the look from that original bag that I want to do. I mean, 
I might just dive in and do it in this one. I'm not sure. I mean, it wasn't excessive. I think it was £12 a metre. Um, so it wasn't like ridiculously expensive. And I would think there's enough if I made any sort of error on it. But it's a bag. I've made lots of bags before. So I might just dive in and make that one actually. And I think what I would do is do the stripes up the pocket maybe across and then I might do a contrast and do the blue around the edge I'm not sure yet um so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to so that might be kind of what I physically work on over the next week or so um and just take my time with to get right um and I think that's it I don't think there's anything new or different at all that I've got I think that might be it so I hope you've had a lovely week of sun. I hope I've not rabbited on for too long. Um, and yeah, let me know what you're up to as always because I love to chat to you in the comments. So drop some comments below. I don't say this very often, but if you can give us a little thumbs up, that would be lovely. And if you're not already a subscriber, please would you subscribe to our channel because we're so close to 4,000 subscribers. It would be so lovely to hit that really, really soon. And I don't really ask about it very often because I just love doing this and chatting to you guys. But yeah, that would be quite exciting, wouldn't it? So take care. Bye for now. Happy sewing. And I will catch up with you next week.